आप लोग कहाँ से हैं सब लोग बिहार कितने लोग बिहार से हैं ये वाला बिहार से है ग्वालियर से है तो और आप तीनों लोग और दो लोग झांसी से हैं आप पिथौरागढ़ से हैं उत्तराखंड में हैं और आप आप बिहार से हैं दोनों नहीं ओके ओके या फाइन फाइन सो बट कॉलेज कॉलेज फ्रॉम बिहार सो आप दोनों बिहार से हैं आप दोनों दोनों झांसी से ग्वालियर से हैं आप ग्वालियर से हैं और बिहार से हैं ठीक है तीन बिहार से हैं दो ग्वालियर से हैं एक पिथौरागढ़ से हैं दो झांसी से हैं ठीक है ठीक है और आपका बैकग्राउंड क्या है इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स कर रखा है आपने कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स सब लोगों ने किया है कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स कोई है जो कंट्रोल सिस्टम नहीं किया है ठीक है सब लोगों ने किया है तो आपने यूजी कोर्स क्लासिकल कंट्रोल थियरी किया है आपने रूट लोकस किया है बोडे प्लॉट्स किया है नाइकविस्ट क्राइटेरियन स्टेबिलिटी क्राइटेरियन कर रखा है आपने है ना ठीक है तो बहुत अच्छी बात है तो फिर आपको कुछ नया बताना थोड़ा मुश्किल होगा ठीक है आप तो खुद ही जानते हैं तो फिर क्या मैं बता पाऊंगा नया है ना आ, तो ठीक है तो हम यहाँ कैसे कंट्रोल सिस्टम पढ़ाते हैं ये आपको थोड़ा सा दिखा देता हूँ ठीक है तो अगर आपको कुछ नया लग, पता चल रहा है उसमें नया दिख रहा है तो बताइए मुझे फिर ठीक है तो आपने किस प्रकार से अभी पढ़ा है या पढ़ाया है अभी तो पढ़ा ही नहीं ना आपने अब पढ़ा पढ़ा है आपने तो कैसे किस प्रकार से पढ़ाया आपने कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स क्लासिकल कंट्रोल थियरी ठीक है और आप सब ने कैसे पढ़ा है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है सिग्नल फ्लोग्राफ्स सो द क्वेश्चन इज देन सो यू हैव हैड ऑल दो इंग्रीडियंट्स ये हमारा यहाँ कोर्स है E250 करके एक कोर्स है कंट्रोल सिस्टम एनालिसिस का टाइटल है है ना तो ये सारे इंग्रेडिएंट्स उसमें भी होंगे फिर है ना तो आप ये बताइए build a simple control system using your ug course or courses on classical control do you think you can build simple simple system we can build simple system okay ha ha theek hai so you can so how many of you think you can build two two hands have gone up Two two people have yes other people. शायद कर सकते हैं शायद कर सकते हैं ठीक है ओके तो हमारा पर्पस यहाँ ई टू फिफ्टी पढ़ाने का ये है कि वो लोग दावे से कह पाएँ कि हम बना सकते हैं ये कि हमें बना सकते हैं ये चाहिए हमें तो जो भी वो सिंपल कंट्रोल सिस्टम बनाना है वो पढ़ाते हैं समझ गए जो भी वो सिंपल कंट्रोल सिस्टम बनाना है बनाने के लिए चाहिए वो पढ़ाते 
बस और कुछ एक्स्ट्रा एक्स्ट्रा कुछ नहीं रखते हैं सब हटा दिया एक सिंपल कंट्रोल सिस्टम बनाना है उसके लिए जो भी करने सीखते हैं लोग इतना है हमारा कोर्स तो कैसे सिखाते हैं क्या करते हैं जो भी आपने कहा सारे इंग्रेडिएंट्स होते हैं उसमें लगभग बस उसको एक फॉर्म दिया जाता है कि इसके बाद ये इसके बाद ये इसके बाद ये ठीक है तो, तो इसमें क्या होता है लगभग जो है फोर्टी लेक्चर्स फोर्टी लेक्चर्स लगभग इसमें होते हैं लगभग फिफ्टी मिनट्स के फिफ्टी मिनट्स ईच फोर्टी लेक्चर्स और कोर्स लगभग हमारा ऐसे जाता है सारे कोर्स ऐसे जाएंगे आपका भी कोर्स ऐसे जाता होगा है ना तो इसमें लगभग शुरुआत में हम कुछ बेसिक सिखाते हैं बेसिक्स मतलब वॉट इज कंट्रोल फीडबैक एंड फीड फॉरवर्ड देन लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म मिनिमल मिनिमल एक्सपोजर टू लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म वी डोंट एम्फोसाइज लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म वी डी एम्फोसाइज लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म बिकॉज लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म इज नॉट नीडेड फॉर बिल्डिंग कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स पीपल यूज टू बिल्ड कंट्रोल सिस्टम्स विदाउट लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म इवन आवर एंटायर क्लासिकल थियरी वी कैन डू विदाउट लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म और राइट सो वी डी एम्फोसाइज लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म वी डोंट स्पेंड अर्यर आई टू स्पेंड थ्री फोर लेक्चर्स ऑन लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म आई स्टॉप वन लेक्चर आई गिव ऑन लैपलेस ट्रांसफॉर्म और राइट देन we have block diagrams signal flow graphs ye sab kuch to hota hi hai then what else do we have we introduce the model of model and block diagram of a pm DC motor. We introduce this model and block diagram of a PMDC motor. Because we build the control systems of a permanent magnet DC motor in E three T lab. So PMDC motor So why PMDC motor? because we build um or we design design and uh deploy the control systems of a pmdc motor in ee380 controls lab that is After E two fifty, the students go after this module. They go to E E three T controls lab, in which we have exclusively only permanent magnet DC motor experiments, because that is the simplest plant to control. You can also do temperature control. You can do, yeah, <coughs> liquid level control maybe. You can do something like that. Those are also okay. Liquid level control needs a lot of setup. Temperature control is also simple. that could have been used in the lab but with pmdc motor control we can build on top of the pmdc motor control systems other things we can build inverter pendulum if you want we can build ball beam we can build motors uh, uh, robots and we can build electric vehicles so there are lots of things we can do with a permanent magnet dc motor control system 
So once you have the basic setup of a PMDC motor control system, you can do lots of experiments on this control system, which will teach the principles that students learn in a basic course. But you can also add more complexity there and build robots and things like that. So in my research, for example, I am trying to build an electric vehicle. So today, when you immediately after lunch, when you come to the control systems lab, immediately after lunch, that is the next stop. So when you come to the control systems lab, we will show you what we are building. We built the control systems lab. We did ourselves. We built our own control systems lab, not in the sense the room. The room was there. The tables were there. Experimental setups we built on our own. We saved about 60 lakh rupees in 2009 for the institute by building our own control systems in house. Okay, I and my student, my student and I. Okay, so the credit goes to the student and me because we both built it. So we built that. We built the setups, and we in each setup we saved about 10 or 11 times the cost uh, of the setup had we bought it from a vendor. You know, if you have this sponsor feedback, those kind of setups, if you buy, then you would end up spending about 2 lakh rupees. We spent, no, not 2 lakh rupees, uh, $5,000. That was the quotation. When the rupee was about 50 rupees, uh, dollar was 50 rupees. $5,000 was the quotation, five or $6,000. So about 2 and a half to 3 lakh rupees. That was the cost. We built our setup in $500, right? Um, means each setup cost us about 25,000 rupees. We could have built cheaper ones. We could have built it in 10,000 rupees if we wanted if we had bought a cheaper motor and the motor would have worked and that's fine. But we bought expensive motors, the best motors from Maxon, Switzerland. And we then, uh, because those motors have been running now for 10 years in our lab, the lab incurs minimal expense every year. For example, last two or three years, we have not spent a rupee on the lab. Okay. And before that, we used to spend once in a while. But quite a bit of that money, you know, we are putting into the lab. Then those kits we are using in our research also. So in my research, I'm using those kits, the same kits, all right, the same lab kits we're using in research. In our um, lab, we are trying to build an electric vehicle called a four-wheel steering, four-wheel drive electric vehicle. I have funding from Department of Science and Technology for such a vehicle, all right. And I already completed one project on that vehicle from with the DST. Now second project I got for such a vehicle. This vehicle has eight, uh, four wheels. Each wheel has two motors. So one is a driving motor, another is a steering motor. So the vehicle can do a zero turning radius maneuver. All right. Uh, it can perform a zero turning radius maneuver. It can, it can do a lane change with a parallel shift of vehicle center line. It can do a crab motion like this. It can do a zero turning radius motion like this. So it can do these things. So it is mm, very useful where space is limited, real estate is limited. For example, factories, for example, in this room. Now, if you want to bring a regular vehicle, that would, you'll have to remove a few chairs from there. But if you this, bring this vehicle in, you will not have to remove any chairs. If it comes through the door, then without removing any chairs, you can move the vehicle through here and go out like that, for example, if it comes through the door, right? But in the conventional vehicle, you'll have to remove a chair there, chair there, etc. With this vehicle, you don't have to. So that maneuverability allows you to um, use your real estate optimally. Uh, that is one thing. A uh, second thing that this vehicle has is because of the distributed drives, it has increased efficiency. For example, conventional uh, internal combustion vehicle, it has about 11 or 12 percent efficiency. Electric vehicle has about 21 or 22 percent efficiency. And this vehicle has about 25 to 27 percent efficiency. All right, because of the distributed drives. All right, because the drives are the inside the wheels. So the gear train has been removed. So because of that, this has more efficiency. So we, since we want to build that vehicle, so we thought, okay, let us use our control systems, whatever we are teaching, in such a way that without spending too much of effort here or there, we can still do our research nicely. So we have tailored our course in such a way that this course goes and plugs directly into our research. Whatever we teach here is what we directly use in our course. We build things using this course. That is how we have designed the course. I also have a project from MHRD to build an automatic book copier because we have a huge library, Kilker library, it's a huge library, it has lacks of volumes 
And imagine if the library burns down. That is a real possibility with any library. It has expensive books, crores, crores of rupees worth books. And if those, if those books disappear, then recovering all those books and recovering, uh, restoring the collection would be almost impossible. Because it has taken almost 60 years, 50 years to build the collection. And uh, rebuilding the collection would be almost impossible. And we have fantastic books in this library. I have personally seen, I have used some books which are of great historical value, all right, which try to help me understand control systems much better, which help me understand electrical engineering better. Such books we have in our library, all right. So I imagined if that library <coughs> burns down, what happens? So I put in a proposal and got an MHRT grant, all right, to big build an automatic book copier. So I am using, I am building a book page turner and a professor, a colleague of mine, he is building a, a uh, the copying part. Uh, you have to turn the page, then you have to copy. Turn the page, copy. Turn page, copy. That's what you have to do. So I am doing the page turning part and he is doing the copying part. All right. <coughs> so today when you come to the EE380 controls lab, I will try to show you a video of our uh, uh, video and the real setup also of the book uh, page um, turner. All right. So this course is going directly and um, helping us do our research, all right. So what are the minimum ingredients you need in this course? So that's what we do, all right. So we teach these things and here we have this PMDC motor. So then, th then we are doing something like, here we are doing frequency response. body plots, all right. Then here we do, uh, we also do stability. I mean we define stability basically in terms of poles and zeros. Stability in terms of poles, right, we do this. Then here we come to Nyquist stability. Theory, Nyquist stability theory, and um, we define minimum phase and non minimum phase transfer functions, Nyquist stability theory. Then we devote Plenty of space here for loop shaping. CISO control systems. So we actually design control systems here, all right. Then we also devote some space here to root locus state space theory. Digital control. And PID control, that's very important. PID control. All right. And uh, then we have non circle criterion. Circle criterion. So those additional topics we have. So this is how we have organized the course. So the entire course has been nicely optimized to help us build control systems. Whatever we don't need at the moment to build control systems, we just don't keep in the course. It's like that, okay. It's been nicely optimized like that. So many of these topics you already know. You all know these topics. How many of you know these topics? 
everybody knows definitely you know these topics definitely you know these topics everybody knows yes these topics body plots you know no body plots you know here there are body plots here but body plot based loop shaping based design basically design basically design using body plots do you know design using body plots forget the forget the loop shaping part see forget the loop shaping part for the time being can you just do design using body plots design means lead like compositor uh, yes 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 i know you can design using body plots or using root locus sir both fantastic fantastic okay but you sir, know sir i have one doubt in root locus yes sir suppose uh, uh, we decide the break away point or break in point ha huh. when we find out ha huh. so there is a criteria that uh, uh, the angle should be equal to 180 degree ha huh. uh, uh to find out the uh, break away point so suppose i have a question regarding like uh, 1 upon 1 uh, by s into uh, s cube plus uh, 6x plus uh, uh, s cube plus 6s square plus 40 then uh, i have a doubt i am not uh, able to find out the uh, accurate sir i didn't remember the question so why shall we not discuss after this we will have time we will have one hour there in the lab okay, we also have lunch break in between okay sir then i will discuss okay. right okay, all right so just let me then quickly show you something that you may not have seen the loop shaping design all right using body plots all right because body plots is a very powerful tool nasa uses body plots isro uses body plots all right and this classical theory itself is used a lot by uh, tejas aircraft ada aeronautical development agency so this course is a very important course <coughs> the latest fighter aircraft use this theory their certification is obtained only if they satisfy certain gain margin and phase margin requirements so for example the light combat aircraft tejas aircraft it is highly non linear its dynamics are highly non linear in the operating envelope however those dynamics have been linearized about 1000 or so operating points and at each operating point you have now linear time invariant dynamics and for at that operating point in design a controller which provides gain margin and phase margin at that operating point so they have about 1000 or so operating points about which they have used this theory though the dynamics overall are non linear they could have used non linear theory also they have used non linear theory also in some places but they don't use them they don't in the sense use the non linear controllers in practice they use only the linear controllers in practice because the certification is obtained only if you satisfy the gain margin phase margin requirements and those requirements are in terms of you know classical uh theory right so this theory is very relevant even today it is not something that you just learn and then forget i in 2006 invited the head of the control systems division of um, vikram sarabhai space center isro uh, dr shantanu das gupta he is the brother of uh, one dr sumna gupta who is a professor in our department so i invited in 2006 to give us a talk here he talked entirely in terms of body plots they talked entirely in terms of body plots so this course is very relevant even today all right it is not just for the po- from the point of view of passing an examination so i'll just give you a quick flavor for um how we do the design all right because the whole course is building up to the design this is the key part of the course once you understand this nicely the pad control can be done understood nicely any lag lead compensators everything will be understood clearly all right the state space theory is okay also useful but we are just using it for digital control all right and root locus is a very good tool it can give additional insights root locus so we don't emphasize root locus i don't emphasize root locus other professor may emphasize root locus but from my practice i find the body plots to be very powerful and uh, i use them uh, more than root locus i use sometimes yes so let us now see how we design a simple control system all right 
So, this we know similar graph paper you have. This stuff you know. Now, what we teach in our design is the following. Suppose you have some time domain specifications. We say that hey, we have a control system, multi-control system that shows this performance. It has a certain overshoot, it has some settling time and the steady state error steady state error. So, we have these three specifications ESS this and this let us say you could have other specifications you could have rise time all right other some other specifications also you could have, but these three simple specifications because in a simple course you cannot stuff too much you have to keep as little as possible in the course right. Um, so, the minimum possibly you have to keep in the course. So, this ESS MP per and TS are enough. So, then this loop shaping based design simply says the following hey ok you want a settling time all right have a section of slope minus 20 dB per decade have a section of this slope centered about omega g this is the gain crossover frequency have a section of slope minus 20 dB per decade centered about omega g you you may not have seen this all right this is a very easy way of designing control systems all right. So, have a section of slope minus 20 d per decade centered about omega g. The width of this section is called decade distance and the decade distance determines the overshoot 1 over m p the decade distance is inversely proportional to the overshoot the more the decade distance the less the overshoot all right. The omega g is inversely proportional to the settling time all right and then if you want to have some steady state error you say forbidden let us say forbidden zone this is a forbidden zone you want a steady state error keep your body plot above this forbidden zone in these frequencies. So, k f is inversely proportional to the steady state error the more the k f the less the steady state error or the more the steady state error you want the less the k f keep it inversely proportional have the body plot above that body magnitude plot and on this end you could also have for noise rejection you could say that this is another forbidden zone for noise rejection this is forbidden zone for ESS and disturbance rejection so here this body plot has to go below it this 
will take care of this figure. This is the open loop. This is the open loop Bode magnitude. Uh, one second. Let us say like this. This is the Bode magnitude plot of of a minimum phase open loop transfer function. That is it. You do not need to do any other memorization, that is it. That will give you that form approximately, approximately. See, you do not need exactly. Exactly is not how it works in control systems. Because even if you do it exactly here on paper, in practice there are nonlinearities <laughs> and other problems. And so, exactly this response you will not get. But approximately that overshoot you will get, that steady state error you will get, and that settling time you will get. If you do not get the settling time, then you know how to tweak. If you are getting more settling time than you wanted, what will you do? If you get more settling time than you wanted, what will you do? Increase. Increase omega g, shift that section to the right. Shift that section to the right. If you get more steady state error than you want, then what do you do? Increase k f. If you have more steady state error than you want, if you want to reduce the steady state error, more k f. So, raise the forbidden zone. No, the height of the forbidden zone. Hmm. Right? You can do that. That is it. Just this, this way. These are, you can arrive at this using some simple insights, which takes about 5 lectures to present. And then they have a tool by which they can rapidly tune a closed loop system using the open loop Pode plot. This works nicely for minimum phase transfer functions, but also works nicely for non minimum phase transfer functions with one additional constraint in the case of non minimum phase transfer functions. That is it. So, for minimum phase transfer functions, it works nicely, and your PMDC motor is a minimum phase transfer function. So, it will work nicely for it. For many systems in practice, this will work nicely because most of them are minimum phase. So, this is something we teach and we teach this because this is simple and this is how it is practiced in the industry. On the other hand, the textbooks do not show this. Almost none of the textbooks available in India show this method, but the industry practices this heavily. Crossover frequency, crossover frequency, yes, gain crossover frequency. Gain, gain, G is for gain. Yes. If you have additional questions, we can discuss over the lunch. <laughs>